Um, you know, at the end of the session, I'm going to talk about some some secret secret weapons of loyalty, and one of them I call category heavy splitters. And you mentioned surveys, so category heavy splitters are the folks I've always used the Home Depot and Lowe's comparison. And what what they don't realize is I spend just as much with each. So whoever mm -hmm. could launch a better program, they would get a tremendous amount of share that they don't realize I'm splitting today. So this concept of gamification and surveys is one example of a great weapon that technology is now enabling. If you ask me, if you give me something as part of a program and ask me how much do I spend with Home Depot and how much do I spend with Lowe's, they'd be amazed to realize I should be a high target for them for really um, stealing share from one or the other. So yeah, that share of wallet. Weapons. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that share of wallet is critical. And we don't think about it as consumers, but, you know, there's a certain money amount of money I spend on, say, gasoline. Um, and there are gas stations on every corner. But why do I go to the one I go to? Is it because of a loyalty program? Is it because I like the pumps? You know, they're always working. You there's don't have to turn left. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. There's, there's a reason for it. But could I be driven to a closer station if they have a lower price yes so it's it's driving that share of wallet and making sure you know the gas station gets all of my gas purchases well and i think also mary you bring up in that example you bring up an important point of like what is the limit and knowing the limit and being able to figure out you know there's no amount of discount that we can offer mary to continue to switch um, so really understanding, you know, the, the levers there that you have to pull and not overspending on promotion when you're not going to get any more share of wallet. And so I think right. that that, you know, some of the data and insights that we are able to collect now can really help companies get smarter because it's not a black box. They can actually really have a more granular understanding of behavior and, and level of or potential for influence. Mm -hmm. So this conversation is a perfect lead to my next question. And you talked about data and we talk about preference and I think Forrester even coined the term zero party data, which is when we gather all this uh, information about a customer that's not transactionally oriented, right? You know my preferences, you, you may know information about my spent, my, the, the things that I bought in the past. So it, it, it's, it's different than transactional data, but, but the marketing world now is a buzz with this elimination of cookies and other data deprecation uh, efforts. Privacy laws are getting stronger and stronger everywhere. So, Mary, what role do you see loyalty playing in this new world of increased data regulations? Well, it's already playing a role, and this is one of the great sort of side benefits that brands didn't recognize initially when they were building a loyalty program or, or an initiative, but they're seeing now. Gathering this, what we call zero party data, as you, as you said, Forrester coined the term, and it's really, it's first party data, you know, it comes directly from the consumer, but it's data that they will willingly and proactively share with a brand, usually in exchange for some sort of value. Um, and we have a chart here. We know that 37% uh, of US online adults say, nah, -uh, I'm not going to give you any more data for any kind of value, you know. Um, but two thirds of US online adults will share. And it's, you know, as you can see on the chart, it's everything from, um, uh, the financial rewards to the experiential rewards. You know, think about that sneaker cult. I don't know what they call it, but there's a people are into sneakers, right? And so, getting early access to the latest Nike or Adidas sneaker that's coming out before my friends, because I'm a special loyalty member. You know, they so they will give more information in exchange for that, but the brand has to act appropriately. They can't get creepy. They shouldn't collect any data that they won't use. So if you have nothing to do with pets or pet products, don't ask me if I have pets. Um, and they have to use the data to the customers as well as the brand's advantage. So use it to personalize those offers more effectively. Or even just in an ad, you know, if if you know someone has a dog, have a picture of a customer with a dog, you know, while the ad is about something else, it, it might generate an emotion um, from that customer. So there's, um, but using the loyalty program itself to collect this data is really um, 
a great way to leverage your, your program. And it's not, it's not hard work. Right. Yeah, it, it amazes me, and I guess maybe it's generational, but I tend to be extremely cautious of what I share, but my daughter, she, she'll share just about anything. Uh, obviously, uh, not highly confidential stuff, but when it comes to this preference, it's amazing to me when if you ask and if you exchange some value, people will share it. And now if, if used in the right way, as you said, uh, people are willing to do it because then you, then they get more personalized offers. It sort of gets back to this. None of us have any time anymore. So if you put in front of me the right offer, right time. Um, right. And you're generating an emotion that you know me and you yep. maybe you care about me. Right. And that's going to uh, proactively drive me to buy. But, you know, AI, ML, all of this data, it has to be used ethically. So you need to be able to check your AI models for bias. Um, uh, you know, so make sure that you're involving um, your uh, your data team, your privacy team, because if you go too far, if you creep out a customer, then you're, you're losing not only them, but everybody they tell. And that transparency in the interaction of, I'm asking you for this because this is what I'm going to do with it, yep. um, is key to building and maintaining that trust and not breaking that trust. Um, and, and it really needs to be, as Mary said, you know, customer focus and relationship focused when when you're doing this, that you're you're not just collecting it because you want to monetize your your first party or zero party data, you know, um, but because you are trying to improve the customer experience, you're trying to create value for them because that's really what they care about most.